Okay, good evening everybody and thanks for inviting me here. Uh, my story is again something completely different. Uh, I will be talking about my ERC starting grant project that uh, started about a year ago. So uh, we are at the initial phase of this project, so I will mainly talk about the background of the project and some, show some first results. Um, it's about lianas and tropical forests. Uh, and before we go to the, to the warm tropics, I want to start at a much colder place, Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth. You see uh, scientists here, they are drilling ice cores. And some of you might know that scientists are doing this to study the climate of the past, because in the ice they find air bubbles which contain the atmosphere of, in this example, up to 450,000 years ago. So by analyzing this air, we can reconstruct the CO2 in the atmosphere in the past. And you see here periods with high CO2 and periods with low CO2. The low CO2 periods are uh, the ice ages, the cold periods, and the periods with high CO2 are the interglacial warmer periods. And you see that today we are at an unprecedentedly high level of CO2 more than 400 parts per million. And this CO2, it's a small molecule, you see it, it represented here at the top. It's a molecule which is responsible for the greenhouse effect and the more CO2 we get in the atmosphere, uh, the warmer the Earth gets. However, plants play a role in this mechanism. Plants are taking up CO2 by their stomates, which are little holes in the leaves. They take up the CO2 and by doing the process of photosynthesis, which is using light and water and CO2, they can produce sugar and biomass. And so they transform the CO2 into biomass. So all the carbon, the sea, of which trees are built up, are coming from the atmosphere from the sea. So by doing that, plants are reducing global warming. And they are doing this better and better. The more CO2 we emit, the more plants take up CO2. And this is illustrated here in the top panel. You see uh, the emissions of CO2 over the last about 150 years. And we see the brown area. Um, that's the emissions due to land use change. So if we cut forest or burn forest, um, we have... Does this work? If we cut or burn forest, we emit CO2. But what happens as well is this, what you see in grey, and that's the emission of CO2 due to fossil fuels. And this has increased dramatically over the last 150 years, as you can see. Um, however, if we look to the lower part of this uh, graph, um, we see uh, the sinks of CO2. Where, is the, our, where are our emissions ending up? And only half of them are ending up in the atmosphere. Because 25% of the CO2 that we emit by fossil fuel burning is ending up in the ocean, and the other 25% in the land. That's indicated in green. And as you can see, the land sink, the land uptake of CO2, has increased over time and is still increasing. Plants are doing photosynthesis faster than they have ever been doing. Because the gradient of CO2 in between what is outside the plant and in the plant is increasing. However, the land sink is highly variable. In a, in a very dry year, the Amazon forest takes up less forest, less CO2, and you see that in the global signal. So, if the climate is variable, the CO2 uptake of plants is also highly variable. And it's also the most uncertain uh, component of the global carbon cycle. Is this land sink, which is the vegetation on the land, the plants. And tropical forests play a very important role in this global uh, carbon cycle. And that's what my project is about about tropical forests. And I, I first have a question for you people in the room. Uh, who has been in a tropical forest in his life? Who had the chance to do that? Please raise your hand. So a few, a few of you have, have had the chance. Uh, I guess most of you have seen tropical forests in movies. 
uh, on pictures. And tropical forests, as you see here in picture, are different, very different than temperate forests. Here you see a, a beech forest, which we have in, in France. Um, the big difference is that these forests don't lose their leaves in summer, in winter, because they don't have a winter there, so they grow all year round. They take up CO2 all year round. They have a very high biomass, a lot of leaves, so they have a much higher productivity, much higher CO2 uptake. Um, they are much diverser. A forest here in France has maybe four or five tree species on one hectare. This forest has more than 100 species on one hectare. But it also hosts lots of different plants and animal species. So high biodiversity and a very complex structure. You see all the trees look very similar. Here you have a very complex structure. And what is also typical here is the dominance of lianas. Here you see a few lianas. Lianas are these, these climbing plants. Lianas. I want you to think along with me. If you hear the word lianas, what do you associate with me? Take a few seconds. Most people think about Tarzan. Well, Tarzan is pure fiction. Because swinging with a liana is it's hardly possible. It's, it's actually impossible. Why? Because lianas are rooting plants. Lianas germinate, their seeds germinate in the soil and they start growing from the soil. And at a certain moment they start climbing a tree. That's the difference with epiphytes. Epiphytes are plants with, which uh, germinate in the tree. The plant starts growing in the tree and it grows down its roots. And then in that case you sometimes have roots, with roots which, are, which are hanging loose and you could maybe try to swing, but I would not advise you because Trees which are full of epiphytes are typically not healthy, so you have the chance to have a falling branch on your head. Lianas are highly diverse. There are hundreds of species of lianas. Um, they have very uh, uh, highly variable growth forms. Um, and they use the tree, they are so-called uh, structural parasites, they use the tree to, to climb up. So they don't have to build big stems to reach the sunlight. And that's a, an important advantage they have. So they have typically small stems compared to the trees. And the, the biomass of the lianas in terms of wood is rather low. Forest typically, tropical forest typically consists only 5% of the wood is wood from lianas. However, when it comes to the leaves, leaves are much more important. Here, uh, a lot of the leaves, all these leaves here, all belong to lianas. Some forests, in some forests, 40% of the leaves belong to lianas, although they have only 5% of the stems. So they compete heavily for light with the, with the trees. They take, they take the light from the trees, and they also grow a lot of roots. So they also compete for water and nutrients in the soil. Um, so forests with a lot of lianas, and uh, have a hard time to grow. And also if a tree falls down in the forest, a gap is created. And in those gaps, lianas can grow very fast in it. As you can see here, here is a tree that has fallen down, and it's fully covered with new lianas that grow over it. And in some cases, uh, forest where you have a disturbance, where you have a gap, maybe it could be cutting of a forest, or burning, or, or a tree that falls down, you get this type of forest. It's fully covered with lianas and the, the uh, forest cannot recover. It takes years before trees can start to grow again. So lianas have a strong influence on uh, the growth of a forest. And however, scientists have, uh, have been neglecting them, have been neglecting these plants because they are very hard to study. They are very diverse, difficult to measure. Uh, if we want to measure the diameter of a tree, we typically measure it at breast height. One meter thirty, there we measure the diameter. But how you do that for a liana that comes up and down, uh, it's very difficult. However, there have been some people studying lianas in the past. Uh, Charles Darwin published uh, uh, a 
scientific publication on the Anas, on the movements and habits of climbing plants in 1875. But after this publication, it took more than a century, till the 1980s, before uh, there was attention again from the scientific community for lianas. And during the 1980s and 1990s, more and more attention and more and more field studies um, appeared on lianas. And in 2002, Oliver Phillips from the University of Leeds compiled all that data. He brought up all together all the data from the Amazon forest on the Andes, and he found that the Andes were increasing. So since the last 35 years, more and more lianas are appearing in the Amazon forest. In number, so more lianas per hectare, but also more a higher biomass. And this is called the liana proliferation. And from that moment on, we uh, a lot of attention is going to that problem because we don't understand why this is happening but also we don't know what the impact will be. And only last year, uh, 2015, a publication appeared uh, from uh, colleagues in the United States and they for the first time showed that the Anas indeed impact the CO2 uptake of forests. They did a big experiment in Kanama where they removed the Anas from big plots of forest and they had also control plots and they found that the growth of the forest was really suppressed by the lianas because the tree mortality is higher in the forest with lianas, uh, the tree growth is lower in the forest with lianas and in addition a forest with a lot of lianas has a, has a lot of leaves but not a lot of stems and it's in the stems that the CO2 is captured for the long term. However, no single vegetation model currently includes lianas. We use vegetation models to predict the future of our planet. If you, if you, uh, if the IPCC on the International Climate Conference here in Paris last year presents their uh, prediction for the temperature by the end of this century, it's based on climate models, but these climate models also include vegetation. How much, you need to know how much CO2 is taken up by the land in order to predict the climate for the end of the century. However, up to now, nobody takes into account these lianas, which are increasing in abundance. And that is what we are doing in the Tree Climbers Project. On one hand, we are trying to understand why the amount of lianas is increasing, but we are also trying to quantify the impact of lianas on the CO2 uptake of these forests by building the first computer model that simulates the growth of these lianas but also by collecting new data that we need to build the models. Um, and I will now give a few examples of the data we are collecting and that we started doing this year. We are working in, in four different places, two in Brazil, uh, a forest site in French Guiana and also one in Panama. And in French Guiana we are studying the impact of disturbance because this is one hypothesis. The more forests are disturbed by humans, the more trees are cut, the more lianas have the chance to grow in those gaps. And this was indeed confirmed by our measurements. We measured the forests with this, which were disturbed and natural forests. These forests have, have been monitored by French scientists since 30 years, but they never measured the lianas. We measured all the diameters of all the lianas, we tagged them with numbers and we found a clear evidence that in the disturbed forest there are many more lianas. Another hypothesis why lianas are proliferating is that they could have an advantage in a changing hydrological cycle. With climate change the tropics become drier. And this might be a reason for lianas to grow better compared to trees. And that's why we are measuring the sap flow with these types of sensors. It measures how much water is flowing through the stems of lianas. We do the same for trees and we are monitoring their water use. And we just started this, but when we have sev several years of measurements, dry and wet season, we might be able to conclude something from that. And we are also analyzing the water in the stems of, this, of the trees and the lianas. Because the composition of the stem water tells you something of where in the soil these plants are getting their water. And this is a very interesting result we found based on those data that we collected in French Vienna. 
Here you see, in this graph you see the composition of the water. It's uh, deuterium and uh, 18O content. Uh, these are isotopes. I will not explain the details, but it's uh, a property of the water which is different from, from deep water or shallow water, for example. And we expected that trees and lianas are competing for the same water, so we expected to find our samples for lianas and trees in the same area in this plot. But in contrast, we found, we found a clear difference in composition on two different soil types. We see that. These measurements were done in the dry season, so in the dry season, lianas take their water from superficial soil layers, while the trees take their water from deep soil layers. So this could uh, give a clue why uh, lianas uh, in, in periods of moderate drought can take up the uh, little available water from the surface, which cannot be taken up by uh, the trees. Something else we are looking at is the CO2, the photosynthesis. Because some studies have proposed that lianas are growing better than trees because they benefit from the extra CO2 in the atmosphere. And here you see one of my students uh, in the top of a tree, and she's measuring with that device the photosynthesis on the leaves of the lianas in situ. I sent my students there because I, I would never do that so high in, uh, in a tree. Uh, but it's, uh, it's amazing, and what we found up to now is that there's no big difference. That is, we, can, we can increase the CO2 and see how the leaves are reacting, and we actually find up to now that the leaves of lianas and trees are similarly responding to CO2. So probably the increased liana growth is not a CO2 response. And a final... Um, the type of measurement we are doing is making 3D scans. With this device, this is a LiDAR scanner, it's a laser scanner uh, which scans the entire 3D structure of the forest. And uh, here you see a representation of, that, of such a scan. And we are doing that in that big experiment of the Americans in Panama, where they removed the lianas and plus with lianas, because we are interested where in the forest structure these lianas are putting their leaves because this will inform our model uh, uh, to uh, how the light competition is happening. And these 3D scans, we can put our scanner on different places and uh, stitch them together. And here you see uh, an example of such a, uh, a scans uh, in a little animation. So you can completely reconstruct the, the 3D structure of the forest. This is very impressive to see, but what we want to do is then analyze that 3D structure, calculate volumes of trees, uh, try to find where the leaves are distributed in, uh, in the forest. And so, in the end, we want to put all these data um, into a computer model. So the data on the growth of the lianas, the photosynthesis, the water use, the structure. And I will not go into the technical details, but we are building a computer program. We are building a computer program that actually simulates the growth of trees, different cohorts of trees, uh, and calculates We simulate all these processes, the growth, the water use, the water uptake in the soil. And uh, in the end, we want to simulate the entire Amazon forest, with and without the Anas, and try to see how the global carbon balance is influenced by uh, the Anas. And our assumption is that um, if we take into account the Anas, this forest might take up less CO2 than we expect up to now. And as these tropical forests are so important for the global carbon cycle, the global warming might be even maybe half a degree warmer than we expect now. Um, 
And here you see some first simulations of our model that we are currently building. We are, we are starting with a simple model where we assume the lianas as being like bamboos, like tiny stems which are with a lot of leaves. We are not yet simulating the actual interaction uh, between individual lianas and trees. But you see, uh, this is the total biomass of the forest over a simulation of 50 years. And you, the green lines are the different types of trees, and the blue line are the lianas. And they are growing. And in our current model, uh, these um, uh, trees are able to survive in a liana covered forest. But these trees are dying. These are the trees, uh, the pioneering trees that need a lot of light. And they die. They are actually replaced by the lianas. And we see also that the total, this is the basal area, so this is the, the measure for the amount of stems, the wood in the stems. You see that the amount of wood is actually decreasing in the total in the forest. Um, and it's mainly uh, due to the fact that the trees are actually decreasing in size. Um, and the leaf area of the entire forest, the amount of leaves in the forest stays the same. But um, you see that um, if, if the lianas keep proliferating, almost 60% of the leaves of this forest is, uh, belongs to, uh, to lianas. So in the future we want to make this model more realistic and use all the data we collect to both make this uh, model as realistic as possible and try to estimate how important lianas are for our uh, future climate. Thank you very much for your attention.